With the oil and gas sector booming, Pembina Pipelines is a company you may want to be aware of. In fact, PPL is a favorite of many investors, not only for its monthly dividend, but the nice amount of growth they have seen in this current boom. Today, we will find out if PPL lives up to all the hype, and we will begin right now. Right off the top, we need to look at this oil and gas boom. The sector has slipped considerably in the last week. Pambina Pipeline dropped 23.9% in this dip. Holy banana bread. Back up the train, Penelope. This is not really a reflection on PPL as Enbridge dropped 15.7% and Warren Buffett's pick Chevron dropped 29.3%. This was a sector drop and not a PPL thing. However, does this drop signify the end of the boom? Is it just too risky to get into oil and gas now? The boom is by no means over. Most economists are predicting that gas and oil will continue to soar for the remainder of the summer and well into the fall, if not into 2023. This sounds absolutely fantastic, but you still need to be a little cautious as a coming recession may have, well, it may have completely other ideas. Before we Mario our way into those pipelines, I want to know what you all think of the oil and gas boom. Have you all been making some good profits? Tell me below in the comments as I really do want to know. Also, if you are new to the channel or one of those folks who watches all the time but hasn't yet subscribed, yeah, I'm talking to you, Bill, please click on the subscribe button. It's free and it helps me bring the content to you. Pembina Pipelines is named after Pembina Oil Field in Alberta, where they were founded all the way back in 1954. They have been very busy since then, and by 1978, they shipped their one billionth barrel of oil. They have been expanding since their inception, and I am not going to bore you with all of those, other than to illustrate that this is a company with a strong track record of expansion and growth. When we boil it all down to its simplest form, PPL owns a lot of pipelines and they are a key company in the transportation of hydrocarbon liquids and natural gas products primarily produced in Western Canada. In addition to this, they also own gas gathering and processing facilities. Part of PPL is an oil and gas infrastructure and logistics company. When we turn to the fundamentals, we can really get a better feel if this is a company we want to hold for a longer term. Their market cap is $26.8 billion, which is not too shabby at all. Considering all the expansion and acquisition they have done, this value falls in line exactly where I would have expected it to be. They have 554 million common shares outstanding. So from that, we can see their share price is a very affordable $46.20 at the time of recording. When we look at their beta, it comes in at 1.74, which is significantly more volatile than the market average. In comparison, Enbridge has a beta of 0.91 and Chevron has a beta of 1.08. So even within the sector, PPL is a little more on the volatile side. Their price to earnings ratio comes in at 20.20. And if we look at their forward PE ratio, it comes in at 19.57. A lower forward PE ratio does indicate that PPL is expected to make more earnings in the future. And that, well, that is not a bad thing. Their price to book ratio is 1.45, which just means their stock price is a little higher than the book value for the company. This is absolutely normal for a company growing fast and in the middle of a sector boom. Let's talk a little bit about their dividends. They have a dividend yield of 5.28% that is paid out monthly in the amount of 21 cents per share. Fun fact, since inception, PPL has paid out a total of roughly $11.1 billion in dividends. Their dividend payout ratio is 110.04%, and that is concerning, as often a payout ratio over 75% can be unsustainable. Of course, with expansion and the expenses incurred from their recent $4.35 billion purchase of Kinder Morgan Canada and the Koken pipeline in 2019, they are still recovering financially. You can see their numbers improving year to year. To finance some of these acquisitions, they do have a good amount of debt on their balance sheet. They are carrying $11.8 billion in debt, which is a lot. In their most recent quarter, it equated to a debt to equity ratio of 81.35. Wow, this is a number that will make some investors run really fast for the hills. However, with the sector boom, there is a real opportunity for them to improve this big time. 
When it comes to return on investment, their share price rose from $39.16 to $46.55 for a return on investment of 18.9%. And once we add in the dividend, we have a total return for the last year of 24.2%. This is really not too bad at all. The big question is if it is sustainable. Sustainability is really the biggest factor with PPL, and that alone makes me feel they are not a great buy. However, with their track record of growth and expansion, they are a company that knows how to manage their debt. And if any company can find a way to pull sustainability out of a hat, it is PPL. Does this make them a good buy then? Hard to say. They are good with debt, but with a coming recession, they may be tested on that. So what is my final verdict? Pembina Pipelines is a company that I see as a good short-term play and a good long-term play, but not so great as a mid-term play. If you already have a solid energy sector diversification in your portfolio, this is a play you may want to pass on. If you have room and want those dividends and are thinking of a long-term play, then they're not a bad choice at all. Speaking of great energy plays, you should check out my video on Enbridge, or you can try the video YouTube thinks you'll like. Your click will decide who's right, and I'll see you in the next video.